listeners i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord as we celebrate our fathers today and we give god glory for every father by birth or not whether you have natural children or not you're a man and you're standing in the gap for somebody we give god reverence and glory for you on today i ask you to join me in the call to worship it can be found in your bulletin. Welcome, you who are called as disciples of Christ. Is anything too wonderful for our God? As we, as we worship, may we receive the prompts, the compassion, and the invitation to be disciples of Christ who joins in God's work to make disciples for the transformation of our households, our community, and our world. And if you're able to stand, we're going to ask you to stand and join with us in the hymn of praise, number 11 in our songs of Zion. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Oh, 
You may be seated. I ask that you prepare your hearts and your minds to pray. As I pray outwardly, I ask that you join me in prayer in Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for this day, God, that you have made, God, and we promise to rejoice and be glad in it, God. Lord, you allow us to lay down in the image of death last night, God, and we rose this morning closed in our right mind, God, with the activity of our limbs. And, Lord, that's enough to say thank you, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for making us in your own image, God, and then breathing into our nostrils the breath that we can use to breathe you. Lord, we thank you, God, for every father this morning, God, but we intercede for those that's waking up without an earthly father this morning, God. I'm asking you, God, to draw them closer to you, God. Comfort them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, God, that you prepare our hearts and our minds to receive a word from you today, God. Lord, help us to lay aside every weight, God. Lord, we thank you, God, that you've already prepared and cultivated the ground for these services this morning. Allow your Holy Spirit to fill this place, God. We came with a sense of expectancy, God, expecting your Holy Spirit to move in a mighty way, God. Have your way, God. We surrender all to you in the name of Jesus, I pray. And we all say amen. Come on and sing it with us. Hallelujah, Jesus. I said, Savior, he's worthy to be praised. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet for our affirmation of faith, number 885, in your United Methodist hymnal. Affirmation of faith, number 885, in your United Methodist hymnal will be reading a modern affirmation. The spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true apostolic and universal. There is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, 
Yes. The made in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is above all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unveiling grace, ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives. Thereby, we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe this faith manifests itself in the service of love and set forth an example of our blessed Lord to the end, that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. You may be seated. We'll now be favored by a musical selection by our choir, number 189 in Songs of Zion. 199 in Songs of Zion. Thank you. 
Hallelujah, Lord, touch me. I ask you to stand to your feet, turn for our Psalter. It can be found on page number 837 in your United Methodist hymnal. We'll be using response number one. I'm going to sing response number one. 837 in your United Methodist hymnal. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and my supplications and has inclined his ear to me whenever I called. And I called on the name of the Lord. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. Turn, O my soul, to your rest. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. What shall I return to the Lord for all my benefits? I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, child of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Amen. 
And as our ushers bring the offering forward, offering plates will not be passed during the service. Please place your offering in the plates upon entering or exiting the sanctuary. And if you're blessed on WebEx with these services, feel free to mail it in to 701 West Street, P.O. Box 1463, Beaufort, South Carolina. may be seated. We are prepared to hear our scriptures this morning. We can go ahead and turn to the Old Testament, page 22 in our Pew Bibles, Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 15, and mark that. Then you can turn over to the New Testament, coming from Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through chapter 10, verse 8. It may be found your pew Bibles on page 1316, and I'll give you just a moment. Go ahead and mark those. Old Testament, Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 15. And the New Testament is Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Chapter 10. Verse 8, we will stand for the reading of our New Testament. I ask you to join, please join me in unison. The prayer of illumination found in our bulletins. Lord, open our hearts and minds to the power of your Holy Spirit as the scriptures are read. Your word proclaim, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. I'll begin with the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 18, beginning at the first verse. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. He sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little, wa let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet rest yourselves under the tree and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts after that ye shall pass on for therefore are ye come to your servant and they said so do as thou hast said Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said make ready quickly three measures of fine meal knead it and make cakes upon the hearth Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he had he haste to dress it and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat and they said unto him where is Sarah thy wife and he said behold the tent and he said I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child? 
which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah did not, saying, I laugh not. She was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Turn over to, with me to Matthew chapter 9, and I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet if you're able. Matthew chapter 9. Beginning at the 31st verse, 35th verse. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And said that he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenty, plenteous, but laborers are few. Pay ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. He will send forth laborers into the harvest. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits, cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. And the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first. Simon, who's called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Issachar, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth, commanded them, saying, not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, to ye not. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, ease the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Thus I have read for your hearing this morning, Old Testament lesson, Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 15. The New Testament lesson, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, chapter 10, verse 8. The Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearers, and the doers of his holy word. You may be seated. Now have the hymn of preparation, number 29, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow. And the next voice you will hear will be the same voice of Pastor Tracy Glover with our morning message by way of the Holy Ghost.
Hallelujah. I know holds tomorrow. The song says many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow. Hallelujah. And I know who holds my hand. Hmm. Hallelujah. I thank the choir for the song of ministry. Ministry of song this morning. They're really blessing our souls. Hmm. God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on Calvary, God, that we might live, God. But I thank you, God. The path was open up, God, for us to come to you, Lord. And for that, God, I say thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we approach you with grateful hearts this morning, God. We don't take any of this for granted, God. Lord, as we prepare to hear your word this morning, God, I thank you, God, that deaf ears have been opened, God, scales have been removed from eyes, God. Lord, don't allow us to leave this sanctuary the way we came in, God. Don't allow the WebEx listeners to leave the way they came on, God. Allow your word to cut us like a two-edged sword. Allow your word to be the mirror, God. Let it change us and convict us into the people, God, that you are calling us to be, God. Lord, I'm asking you to hide me behind your cross, God. Allow Tracy to decrease and allow your Holy Spirit to take over this willing vessel, God. Mm, What a fresh anointing this morning, God, from our crown of our head, God, to the soles of our feet. God, blow fresh breath on us this morning. But I thank you, God. I praise you, God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to ask you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians. God, he's reminding us of some things. 
um, that we need to do some self-evaluation on. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, it can be found in your pew Bible on page 1567. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, found in your pew Bible. When you find it, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet and give reverence to the reading of God's holy word. 1 Corinthians, pew Bible, page 1567, 1567. You'll hear pages turning. I'm going to wait on you. When you find it, signify by saying amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Hallelujah. I'll begin reading at the 24th verse. I'll be reading out of the, my study Bible as I often do when the Holy Spirit leads me to do so. And this portion of scripture talks about the need for self-discipline. 24 says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, run, only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. We do it to get a crown that will last forever. 26 says, therefore, I do not run like someone run aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. Verse 27 says, no, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. Word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. And just for a little while, as long as the Holy Spirit says so, the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us from the sermon topic. Are you prepared to press through the process? Are you prepared to press through the process? Wesley, even before we were formed in our mother's womb, God already knew who we were, and he had a place for us in his plan. He already knew the plans he had for us. And for anybody who knows about John Wesley and some of the history of John Wesley, John Wesley says it like this. He said, first, we have the provenient grace. And that's the grace that goes before us. That's the grace that everybody has. That's the grace that's looking out for us and preparing us even before we acknowledge God. Then we have the justifying grace. That provenient grace prepares us for justifying grace. And justifying grace is the assurance of forgiveness when we come to repentance. So it's already in, inside of us, the provenient grace. So when we come to the realization that we need God to save us from our sin, it is just justifying grace that does that. And followed by that justifying grace, then we have the sanctifying grace. And John Wesley describes the, it as entire holiness of heart. And to sanctify church means to set apart or declare holy, to consecrate. You see, the provenient grace, we're on the porch. He talks about it like this, like a house. The provenient grace, we're on the porch. Sanctify, excuse me, the justifying grace, now we've come in the door. The sanctifying grace, we're in the house. That's how John Wesley describes it. So many times, church, as the Holy Spirit was ministering to me, he says, we're, God, we're waiting on God. So many times, God is waiting on us. He's already given us what we need. See, church, we have to learn nothing in is nothing out. We got to put something in. Yes, salvation is free, but we got to put a little work in. Amen, somebody. Amen, chandeliers. You see, on this day-to-day -day journey, and there's so many scriptures that tell us that we are in a race. 
here on this earth, we are running a race that has been set before us. And God has told us this. The Holy Spirit has even came, Wesley, since I've been here and told us this before. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Anybody eyes fixed on Jesus this morning? The pioneer and the perfecter of our faith for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of God. God has taken us right back, Wesley. He's told us before, and I'm no athlete. I was just telling um, Mr. McBride this morning when I was coming up the step, I was out of breath. That means I need to exercise. But runners don't get in a race without being prepared. I'm no athlete, and I don't know whether we have some runners in the house, but I think you have to condition your body. You're going to get up, and you're going to go to that gym, and you're going to practice to run, and you're going to build up what's called your stamina. I maybe can only run a little bit today. See, I got to start out with a slow walk because I got to get up to running. But we have runners in the house that can run for miles because you've been doing it so long, church. You have put the work in. He said, now, come on with me. I want you to think about that natural race, but now I need you to think about this spiritual race we're running. Hallelujah. See, we come to this altar and we tell God, I surrender all to you. Lord, you head of my life. You're my savior. But then we ain't putting no work in. Amen, somebody. We're not building up our spiritual muscle. See, once we get on this line, then we need to get in our word. We need to spend time with God. We need to spend time in prayer. We need to spend time so that the Holy Spirit can minister to us. Because, see, we got to hide that word in our heart, church, because sometimes when the devil is coming up against you, you don't have time to read and run and get the Bible. So you got to have those scriptures in your heart so you can give God his word back. You can put it in the atmosphere for him to f- perform it. Hmm. Because I'm not an athlete, I'm no expert. Google, I Googled it. What does an athlete need to endure? I wanted to find out about these 5Ks and these triathlons, these long, it's one for 26 miles. Google told me self-discipline is important to an athlete. It told me that discipline is one of the most important traits learned through sports. Discipline is essential for any sport because it builds an athlete's, not only does it build the stamina, but it builds the athlete's character. Help them focus and achieve their goals without distraction. Let me say that again. It builds an athlete's character to help them focus and achieve their goals without any distraction. And it went on to say, beyond sports, discipline is also instrumental to succeeding in other areas of your life. Anybody disciplined this morning? Amen, somebody. You see, Wesley, the Holy Spirit wanted me to use this example. I heard him say, won't get very far without the right character. Hmm. You definitely won't get very far on this Christian journey if you're distracted. The Holy Spirit wanted me to let somebody know that too many of us is distracted on this race. He wanted me to remind somebody you've been looking back so long till you can't move forward. He said you got to turn around so you can see where you're going. Don't worry about what's behind you. I need you to move in front of you. Hmm. We need discipline on this Christian journey. But you know what? I'm so glad the God we serve. Same God that saw that we were in trouble, that mankind was in trouble. The same God that sent his only son, Jesus, to die on Calvary to redeem us. The same God knew. Even after Jesus came and went back, he knew we still needed some help. So the God we serve sent the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that's going to come and dwell on the inside of us, that's going to help us to run this race that's set before us. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
and the same Holy Spirit came with gifts. How many of you know that one of the gifts is self-control? How many of you know all we have to do is cry out? Let's look at our text this morning. And before we look at this text, you need to know a little background about 1 Corinthians. See, Paul was writing to the church in Corinth. There's problems in the church. We don't have no problems in the church. There was problems in the church, and he was writing to them to offer a solution, but to teach them how to live as a Christian in a corrupt society. Let me say that again. He was teaching them how to live as a Christian in a corrupt society. You think we need that today? I think if we take a look around us, we are living in a corrupt society. So this word is going to teach us how to live. Back then, if you look up the history, they, it was big then in Corinth with races. And they, the race was a big thing, but the race that they were running in, only one person got the prize. So that's why he used this illustration and he said, run in a way to get the prize, but not the prize that everybody else is thinking about. Get the prize that's going to last forever. We got to stay on this journey, church. We can't get up. We got to have endurance. We got to prepare in order to persevere. See, we got to spend time in that word and the Holy Spirit is going to take me right back there because that's what's going to that's what's going to strengthen our spiritual muscles. When we sit in the presence of God, sometimes we just have to listen, church. Sometimes we don't even have to say a word because he already knows our heart and he knows our mind. Sometimes we just have to spend a little time in our prayer closet. God, what do you want me to see out of this situation, God? I know if you allow me to come through to it, God, you're going to bring me through it. I'm not in here by myself, God. All I've got to do is trust you. But how can you hear from somebody you're not spending time with? Hmm. Hallelujah. How can you hear? Because, see, when we have these disciplines, when we spend time in prayer, when we spend time in Bible study, when we spend time in worship, it's going to stir up something on the inside that you just can't keep to yourself. It's like the more you get, the more you want, the more you come in contact with God, the more you want to feel his presence. That way, when you're going through church, you know he's right there with you. But see, what I want you to understand is some of us, church, we get on this Christian journey, and sometimes we want to sit down and rest a little while. I stop by to let somebody know it's not time for sitting down now because the enemy is on your tracks. You've got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. You got to keep moving when the storms of life are raging. As long as you keep moving, you're going to come out of that storm. Some of us want to serve when it's convenient. Hallelujah. Some of us want to get up and jog around real slow sometimes. Some of us don't spend any time out somebody. But you got to spend time with God. And I don't know who he's talking to. He's preaching to me today. Because sometimes you can get so busy with life till you can leave God out. You can get so busy with life till you don't realize you need to get up a little earlier in the morning. Because every time Jesus performed a miracle, he always made time to pray. Because it's something about when you pour it in others, you've got to allow God to pour into you. Well, Remember the Holy Spirit told us uh, that we pour in the others out of the overflow. So if we're not coming before him so he can pour in us, uh, we won't have no nothing to pour in to nobody else. See, when we get up, I don't know about you. The Holy Spirit said this last week, but we got to put on the full armor. Some of us is in this race and we ain't even that's the right way when we sit in that word we put on the full armor of God 
Lord, I don't care what comes against us. There's nothing that you and I cannot handle. Because I have on my wall clothes. <laughs> You've already given me my weapons I need to fight with spiritually, God. So when the enemy comes up, I'm going to be able to press my way through. Anybody had to press your way through some things. You didn't know whether you were coming or going. The enemy tried to confuse your mind. And you had to pull out the word and say, God did not give me a spirit of fear but a power love and a sound mind church we've got to learn to use the weapons so we can press our way through this process sometimes it get a little hard every now and then but I'm so glad church I'm so glad that he put somebody in place that even when I can't pray for myself he's got me covered because I've spent the time that I need needed to spend see Wesley that's enough to get excited about that's enough to get excited the Holy Spirit is through how many of you realize what we have in Christ I mean, really realize what we have in Christ. Because he tells us how to enter his courts and his gates. Amen. We shouldn't have to come in pump and prime people. If anything, I should be saying, quiet, sit down. We got to hear the word. Has the Lord done anything for you? I mean, I really did anything for you. And I don't know why the Holy Spirit is taking me there. So I always heard people say, my grandmother used to sing, I'm going to send up my timber. If I can't say a word, I'll just wave my hand. But the Bible tells us, let everything that has breath. What did he say? Let everything that has praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't want no rocks crying out for me. I don't want no crocs, no rocks crying out for me. <laughs> Are you prepared? Press through the process. And can I tell you something about Satan? Don't fight fair. Wherever you're weak, he's watching us. He's studying in us. He's not going to hit you where you're strong. He, his, his goal is to kill, steal, and destroy. He want to knock you out. He want to kill you. So I'm going to watch Dr. McCullough, and I'm just using him because I'm looking at him. I'm going to see where he's weak at. Might take me a little while to study him and try to figure him out. Then when I find that weak spot, I'm going to keep hitting that weak spot. If that weak spot is his children, I'm going to keep attacking his children. If that weak spot is his grandchildren, the enemy going to keep attacking in that area. Wherever it is, Satan don't want to work hard. So he coming for your weak spot. He weak right there anyway. And for those of you who build, I don't know why the Holy Spirit taking me here. A fence. If something wants to get in a fence on your property. And this animal, he's he not going to work hard. I can imagine him just hitting that fence to see where the weak boards are or where the weak steel is. Hallelujah, I see. And I know Mr. Jordan, he's our trustee, uh, our chair of trustee. But I notice those gates, your Holy Spirit, or at the educational building. They were all in worn. And if you would push on the bottom of them, if an animal wanted to get through, it was weak. It could get on in. Gate didn't even close anymore, but now with the new gates, hallelujah. <laughs> Look at God. Now when you open it and go in, the gate is closing behind you. You need to prepare for this journey, church. Many people lose them by default. You can't lose something God already gave you. you God 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for reminding us to be prepared to get ready. Mm. Hallelujah. Just before we do the altar call, and I don't know who the Holy Spirit is talking to, but we need to do a self-evaluation. You don't have to tell anybody, but this week coming up, see how much time you're spending in your word. See how much time you're spending in prayer. You can count today as your worship. Amen, somebody? That's for you. And yes, we go throughout the day saying, Lord, I thank you. I find myself at my desk praying. But don't count that. Count the prayer where it's just you and God. You get up 15, 20 minutes early before you go to work. Count that 20 minutes. Or count that 10 minutes. Just you and God. Without the distractions. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, that's the first thing. Step out on faith this morning. Tried everything else. I want to try Jesus. I heard about a man. And I want to try Jesus. Step out on faith this morning. Let us pray the sinner's prayer with you. And surrender to Christ. The doors of Wesley is open. If God has sent you to this body. To connect to this body. Give us your hand. But be sure to give God your heart. So if you're in a backslidden state. And the Holy Spirit just has me there. He won't let me move. You're going to hear it every Sunday. He's waiting with arms open wide. Come home. Come home. Don't worry about it. You are forgiven. Come home. The choir prepares to sing. The altar is open for prayer. You may come at this time.
Lord, we thank you, God. We come before your throne once again, God, with our head bowed in the locks of our shoulder, God. Some came for one thing, God, and some came for another, God. But you know all about us, God. You know what we need, God, even before we can ask, God. I'm asking you, God, to hear every petition in the name of Jesus. But move, let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Lord, if we're praying out of your will, God. Lord, I'm asking you, God, to allow the Holy Spirit to intercede this morning in the name of Jesus. But, Lord, give us the courage to cast our cares on you, God. Lord, don't let us take them back this morning, God. Lord, stop us from playing tug of war with you, God. Lord, we're casting our cares at your feet this morning in the name of Jesus. Because in your word, you told us not to be anxious, but through prayer and supplication, make our requests known to you, God. With thanksgiving, God, and that your peace would guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus, God. Lord, let us experience that peace this morning in the name of Jesus. Remind us, God, that our hearts don't need to be troubled, God. Lord, help our unbelief, God, if there's any belief, unbelief among us, God. Us a heart, God, to receive, God, everything that you've promised, God. Thank you for the reminder, God. Thank you for the direction, God. Thank you for the correction, God, on how we need to spend more time with you, God. But I thank you, God, that as we go throughout our week, God, this week you will remind us the Holy Spirit will bring these things back to our remembrance. Father, forgive us, God, for putting you on a shelf and not spending the time with you that we should, God. But, Lord, we thank you, God. We give you all praise, honor, and glory, God, for seeing beyond our faults and supplying every one of our needs, God. Thank you for loving us, God, in spite of Thank you for the avenue, God, of repentance, God, to bring us back into the fold. Thank us, God, for making us your children, God. But most of all, God, thank you for reminding us that what we can see is only temporary. But what we can't see is eternal, God. And, Lord, we thank you, God. We love you, God. We give you all honor, glory, and praise for you are so worthy. And it's in Jesus' precious, mighty, and holy name. And I claim all these things done. And we all say amen. Amen. Thank you, God. We'll now have a special presentation followed by a welcome of guests and parish concerns. Good morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful day, and we certainly want to take this time to recognize fathers in the church and wish them a happy Father's Day. We have a little token for you um, to share with you today. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day, and God bless you.
say happy Father's Day to all the fathers and um, all the father figures out there. Um, it is always, I always say it is the best job in the world being a parent. Thanks be to God. Hey, we welcome back again. Still welcome Ms. Marion Thompson from um, Pinecrest Circle in Bluffton. I guess it's Ms. Uh, Ms. Cynthia Hayes. Um, and because they're friends, so welcome back. Right. The stage and All right, amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Birthdays for the week of 18th uh, through the 24th. Miss Ruth Collier. Uh, today is her birthday. Uh, tomorrow, Miss Carmelita Lawton. And so. Wednesday is my oldest son Corey's birthday, the 21st. No, he's, he's old. Oh, he's old. All right. Um, he didn't say this last week, but thanks to the conference, we're sending our pastor back to us for another year. Get to learn from her and grow with her. Uh, we have a card from um, Christina Wilson. And her card says, strong men, lean on, lean on God. Faith has been such an inspiration. You approach life with the wisdom that comes from being close to God. Thanks so much for the faith you live and being such an inspiration to all who know you. Happy Father's Day. Wilson, always in love. Jesus' is love, love never fails. We do have the memorial... Um, um, create the program for the celebration of life, Dr. Carla L. Daniels. Um, if anyone would like one in remembrance of her, and Grace of the Chapel of African American Fiscal Church, uh, they just want to remind us that um, they they're going to be celebrating their 154th anniversary. Dr. Uh, Dr. John Black of Campbell AME Church, Bluffton, is going to be their guest speaker. Him and his congregation will be there. The theme is Moving Forward with Faith from Generation to Generation. Um, we will recount your praise. From, uh, taken from 2 Timothy, Timothy in Psalm, um, 2 Timothy 1, and Psalm number 9. We look forward to seeing you there um, today at 4 p.m. program you see the looking ahead and the Bible study is going to take a little pause until September. Education Bible School starts this week. Good luck and enjoy um, all participants. Uh, who are prayer list, please send a prayer, a call, pay a visit to those on the prayer list. Words to encourage evangelism. God uses us to speak to people on his behalf from the Bible study tools. A blessed week, and gentlemen, enjoy your Father's Day. It's the Lord, everybody. Um, didn't make the announcement about me coming back because the PPRC wanted to do it on first Sunday, and they actually changed the pastor. So if you see, I was sitting up here quiet, um, Ms. Robertson had already talked to me about that, but I'm I'm excited to be back.
Thank you, Wesley, for feeding and fellowshipping with Camp Salkahatchee Wednesday. Um, I checked with Miss Louise, and everything went great. Thank you for coming together as a family. I just love you, Wesley. I do. I love you with the love of God. Please, please, please tell somebody. Tell a neighbor. Tell a friend. Vacation Bible study is going on. Vacation Bible school is going on at Wesley. Somebody told me. I've been invi inviting everybody. And if you need a ride, just call me. I'll pick you up. And if I can't fit everybody in my car, I'll call some other people with some cars and we'll pick you up. But somebody and Wesley, the pastor going to be looking for you. Amen? Some people didn't say me amen, and it's okay. That means you don't agree. You ain't going to be here. But at least you didn't say amen, and you know you're not going to be here. Uh, we can't invite other people to our house and we ain't home. Amen, somebody. Amen, but your pastor will be here if she's here by herself. But I like to greet the visitors, but I'm looking forward to vacation Bible school this week. You know what I always tell you. Fathers, I'm going to tell you, I love you. You will hear me say it all day. Children, I'm going to say if you have a living father, love on them. Men, you take time out with him. I got to take flowers to the cemetery today. I thank God that he's placed all of you in my life. I have fathers. Amen? Oh, Wesley, I love you. I love you. I love you. And I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to prepare for our closing hymn, number 179, Songs of Zion. Precious Lord, we're going to ask you to stand to your feet. Let us look to the hills and be dismissed. Lord, we thank you, God. If we had 10,000 tongues, God, we couldn't thank you enough, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for your word from on high, God, through song and word, God, that we can go out and encourage somebody this week, God. Stir up a boldness in us, God. Let us be love in this dark, dark world, God. Let our little light shine. Now may the love of God, the sweet, sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And we all sing together.